he's just not level. So there's something mechanically not there. And I would, I would venture to say that at least going down to the minors and getting some confidence back or just tinkering and and without like going through the minutia of every day playing would do him some good, especially for a guy who has struggled since the onset of spring training. Like he's never looked good this entire season. You are locked on Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. It's your boy, Evan Klosky. And we're the host of the Lockdown Race Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. I presently have the hiccups, so bear with me here. Uh, Love that for you. Just moment, <laughs> just Something just moments ago made me laugh really hard, so this could be a unique episode for sure. Um, check us out on all platforms, YouTube all that email us anytime locked on raise at gmail.com speaking of that so a little inside baseball ulysses and i did two mailbag episodes already this week and we have so many other questions to get to thanks to our great listener base that we will have a quasi mailbag episode with klosky but i think ulysses you want to put evan on the spot for something before we dive into these trio of questions we have I must, because uh, before we had recorded, we were talking about something, and it uh, sparked my brain here. I think we all agree that the 2024 offense is, at best, anemic. Um, 97 WRC+, plus, which ranks 19th in all of Major League Baseball. Evan, if we were able to put the 2024 race, as of May 23rd, play against the 2022 race... Who would score a run, and why would it be an extra innings win? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, I would, man, I would venture to say at this point, at this point, I might be leaning towards, are we talking about like a fully healthy 2022 roster? What we saw in the, I mean, let's just take the, at the end of the year, they were like a 101 WRC plus. Like they were just basically a little bit better. Well, I'm, I'm, because I lean towards that 2022 squad, mostly because Wander Franco was on the team. Having said that, Wander was injured for a large portion of that season, which caused a lot of the issues that they had. Um and I would argue that the 2022 team at that point at least had a generational talent on their roster who we believed would be a consistent force in the lineup before horrible things happened, uh, which have sent this organization into an oh crap tailspin yes. offensively. Because now the person you're supposed to have in your lineup, number three hitter, number two hitter, wherever you want to put him, a guy who can maybe hit 30 bombs one day. Steal 50 bags, maybe extreme uh, has an amazing eye and can make contact with the ball consistently. Those guys don't grow off trees. So no. I have to lean 2022, but I, I, I will say that the, the future is, is pretty, I think I'm, I'm more optimistic about what's coming down the chute than maybe I, I was in 2022 where things were still pretty distant and I don't know kind of what what big – I mean, like, who's the big prospect back in – Carson Williams is the savior of this franchise market on the board. Uh, I mean, he's going to have to be to fill that void at, at shortstop. Yeah. But it's been very quickly – you mentioned Carson Williams. I think what he has done this season has really – changed his trajectory as far as the ceiling you might put him in because there's a difference when a guy is consistently striking out 30 31 percent of the time at lower levels and then all of a sudden like leads all of minor league baseball in wrc plus and is striking out now 24 percent of the time yeah 25 i mean not saying that that's sexy but considering you just dropped your k percentage by six points moving up a division that's you know and he's growing into his body he's getting older and he's also 
probably a gold glove caliber shortstop. There's, there's a lot to be happy with him or excited about him. There's a lot to be excited about with Xavier Isaac. The other, you know, Isak Paredes, I think, is proving more and more that he should be a staple for this yeah. team. Um, yeah. and, and then not to mention you got to figure out Junior Caminero. But that if you can move him over the first base, maybe. I know they're trying him out at second. But, you know, those – I mean, that between Carson, Isak, Junior – that's that's a pretty formidable future on paper. Yeah. No doubt. All right. Actually, yeah, whatever. I mean, Xavier Isaac's going to have to play first. So they're going to have to figure out something for Junior. I don't yeah. know. It, they're, they're trying to figure that out this year, I guess. That's what the minor leagues are for in development. Um, all right, let's dive into these mailbag questions. Uh, really good questions, if I may add. This first one from Michael Johansson says, you're Kevin Cash or the front office? You've got one move to turn the team around. What's your move? Um, very good question. You have to add a power hitter. I mean, my, my, the, the move would be assuming that he wasn't in one of the worst slumps of his minor league career would be bringing up Junior Caminero because his power is what you need in this lineup. Uh, sadly, Randy has fallen off a cliff. Brandon Lau is going to flash power at some point, but just like his entire career, you do not know when that heater is going to come. He's going to have like five homers in a week, but it's going to be pretty anemic for a two to three week stretch. So the power of consistency is the best way to play Brandon Lau, which is why everyone gets up in arms. But, you know, between Josh Lowe being hurt now, who is another guy who can hit 20 homers, Randy falling off a cliff and Brandon Lau being inconsistent, you need a guy who's able to raise your slugging, who's able to really drive in some runs with anybody on base here. So to me, the one move I'm making is bringing in a power hitter and in a, in a vacuum, it's bringing up junior Caminero, but we would probably need an entire podcast to explain why that's complicated because he doesn't have a position and they're not going to bring him up as we've mentioned, even before the season, Right. They're not going to bring him up to not play every day and they're not going to have him rot on the bench being a DH when he's one of their most prized prospects who they want to utilize in the field. You know, even like Vladdy Jr., who, you know, is built, you know, in, in like a body sort of like him, not as big as Vladdy Jr., but like Vladdy plays first. Right. Like these guys are, are meant to play the field. You don't really like have these like top five prospects and say, Oh yeah. Like why don't you come up and be my DH? It just, right. it's not good process. So yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty stuck with where to put him. And it could lead to a very difficult decision down the road of, of who, who's got to go. But um, in, in, a, in a vacuum, that's my move. Yeah. Just to piggyback on that. Um, I like the idea, and I know there's prospects that need opportunities, but a proven veteran power hitter that can step in right away and doesn't have a learning curve. Um, I don't know. Just throwing out a name here, Paul Goldschmidt. I know the Cardinals are in uh, in the dumpster right now, but I don't know what his contract situation is. But just thinking along those lines, it'd probably be too expensive of an ad. But some sort of uh, notable name that has hit, you know, 25, 30 home runs in his past. Who did uh, J.D. Martinez? Oh, with the Mets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, if, the, if the Mets fall off, I don't know. Is J.D. Again, I mean, are we talking about in a va- like in a vacuum here, or are we talking about what the Rays would do? Because theoretically- no, no, he said no, no. He said what's your move? The yeah, Elephant. exactly. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. So that's I'm just making getting that clarification. All right, there we go. Um, good question there from Michael. This next one from Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you are purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, that flight you've been eyeing, or the fancy dinner we've all been craving. Other apps give you points that don't really amount to much, but with Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, 
upload your receipt and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including all your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and beyond. So right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKDOWNMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and uh, uh, download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code Locked on MLB, L O C K E D O N M L B. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A, in the Google Play or App Store. And don't forget, use the code Locked on MLB, L O C K E D O N M L B. Kevin, I know that when you want the best supplies, guess what? You go to Supply House, don't you? Mm -hmm. Because it is the it is the most reliable way. To order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online, their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources, and that's why Kevin has it bookmarked on Google Chrome. You can shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Now, maybe when that happens, Perry barks a little bit then, right? Maybe maybe mm-hmm. Perry goes a little bit crazy. That's okay. You know, you can also get, get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business. So today, why don't you go to supplyhouse.com and you can join thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership. And you can order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. Alvi Seda, like that name. Mm-hmm. Uh, the topic is Rays lineup with almost the entire Rays lineup under 300. Is it time to make some adjustments on the batting order and players in the lineup? Why Ben Ramirez, who usually has a consistent bat that makes contact and also hustles to insert a guy like Aranda, who hasn't shown too much with the bat at the major level. In addition, everyone wants the veterans like Bilau and Randy to be the catalyst to get the bats going, but they are batting 132 and 162. Why not drop them down in the order or try someone different? The Rays haven't won a game since Bilau's return to the lineup, and he has also made errors that have cost us the game. Is his time with the team coming to an end will he end up like brett phillips well there's so much to unpack there my goodness um thank you for writing in um okay that was actually his uh dissertation for his phd yeah can we pop that up because there's a lot to tackle here yeah let's 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 pop that that up pop that up on the youtubes intern mcgee thank you okay so first off everyone in the rays lineup under 300 Mind you, hitting 300 is extraordinary. Like, right. That's not, not the 90s um, anymore. Correct. So, like, to say that everyone's uh, it, hold up, hold up. Can I be? Can I be devil's advocate here? I, that might have. That might be a typo, and he might have meant meant 200, right? Because like, there's no way he meant 300. Uh, um, I think he meant 300. I mean, because really? he, I think he not meant like, 300. Yeah. Because wow. if you look at the, and I just want to, maybe wanna... he he meant that the Rays don't have enough three hundred hitters. If we're trying to save with him. almost the entire race lineup under three hundred, man. Okay, I thought Rosario was at three hundred. Maybe he all these guys high nah, standards. I mean, like I'm just going to like team. All right, so two seventy is the new three hundred, folks. Well, I'm just going <laughs> to say right, like the 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 Houston Astros lead the league in average, and they're hitting two sixty four. Okay, right. so average right now. So the number 15 team in Major League Baseball in average are the Baltimore Orioles and they hit 242. So I just want to I just want to provide perspective there of like you're going to have most of your players hitting south of 300. Outside yeah. of like Yandy Diaz who should be a 300 hitter uh, and is not which is part of the problem. Um yeah, so let me just attack that portion first. Bring back the note because there's a lot there. Bring it back. I need Bring it back. It back. Bring yeah, he, he needs a okay. dissertation. Yeah, it's it's a lot to tackle here. So it I, is. I will say, next, um, the next point. 
I, yeah. So Isak Paredes right now is the only um, the only guy hitting over. Uh, oh, and Josh Lowe, but he just got hurt. Well, he, wasn't he batting like 240 or something? Oh, man. Well, regardless, he's played like. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, game, it's. So. Yeah, so um, whatever. But it, the hitting has not been great. So, yeah, I understand that. So Harold Ramirez has not been playing because they have faced in a, an unbelievable amount of righties in a row. So Harold Ramirez has proven time and time again him hitting against righties is not a successful formula. So the great taste that you have in your mouth is from the previous couple of seasons where the Rays have platooned him properly. He's played significantly against lefties. His right. average is extraordinary against lefties. Not to mention, if we want to even get into the weeds of how Ramirez, how his contact is weak, his BABIP is extremely high. Now, give him credit. He is consistent at somehow having this insane BABIP, uh, BABIP with his weak contact that he's able to get on base. But you have to give Jonathan Aranda time. Like, yeah. the fact is, Aranda is your future, or you got to find out if he is your future or not. Harold Ramirez is going to be gone from this roster. I thought it was going to be before the season. Injuries happened. He stuck around. But the fact that he hasn't played in a while kind of tells you where the team is at on Harold Ramirez. It's nothing against Harold. Love him. But he just he does not fit into future plans. And for this franchise that is in a little bit of a what-do-we-have mode, you got to play Aranda. Like, the whole essence of the spring training was like, we need to get this guy consistent at bats where he's not looking over his shoulder saying, am I getting sent down? Right. That was the whole they gave Josh. They gave Josh Lowe that treatment of like, hey, you're going to be our guy. Pretty much what Renee Pinto went through this year. Yeah. Stunk it up, went down to triple A, pretty much stayed there the rest of the year. The following year he came back. Boom. Was a different guy. So you have to like you can't just write people off because last year or like in 150 at bats, he hasn't done well. In the grand scheme of things, it's a very small sample size. And as someone who talks with, you know, the raise powers that be sometimes and just listens to them uh, in these press conferences. It's just like they have a hard time believing that a guy like Aranda and his minor league success is not going to translate that at some point in time to the major league level. It's why they're scratching their heads about Alex Jackson. Like this guy right. so well in the minors, what is the mental block that makes him just forget how to hit at the major league level? So they believe that with some time and some patience, they're going to finally see the fruition of that. Um, so Bilal and a Rosa Reina, I mean, I, so I, I do agree. It is time that they need to start considering a Rosa Reina at a different point in the lineup. Uh, Bilal, I, I mean, we really, you're looking at Bilal's average. How many at-bats does that man have? Now, now historically okay. speaking, he's probably going to be a 220 hitter, right? I mean, given right. significant amount of bats, but with a guy like b with his power, you're going to want him higher in the lineup because if people get on base, you're going to want him to bring bring them home. To me, I even put this on Twitter the other day, batting a Rosarena and b back to back seems like a very bad idea. And yeah. on paper, I get it. From a computer, I get it, where it calculates everything they have done and what they could do and yada, yada, yada. Understood. But right now, my eyes tell me these guys are not in sync. And that's a problem because at some point you got to say, you know what, we got to, we got to like build up Randy's confidence right now. And yeah. currently teams are walking hitters before Randy to face Randy right. spots. And, and Randy has forgotten how to hit a fastball, which he's normally crushed in his career. His mm -hmm. run value last year via baseball savant was like 17 on fastballs this year. It's minus two. His like expected batting average is like 100 against fastballs. To me, he really needs a phantom IL stint, and he needs to go down to the lower levels and like mm -hmm. get his timing correct. Whether his swing is too long, whether they have tried, to, you know, I don't know if they tried to tinker with anything. It doesn't look like it. It's not like he's his spray chart is he hasn't gotten a hit the opposite way yet outside of a homer. Like in the field, he hasn't gotten a base hit op opposite field, which per his spray charts in the past. Nuts. He's usually he's usually all over the place, right? That's part of his charm. Yeah. But yeah. um, you know, so then that got me thinking, like, is he just trying to do the Isak Predis thing where he pulls everything and they're hoping that he unlocks that world? But his his pull, you know, straight oppo numbers, his percentages, they're the same. He's just not barreling up things. He's either topping it 
or hitting in the ground. Like he's just not level. So there's something mechanically not there. And I would, I would venture to say that at least going down to the minors and getting some confidence back or just tinkering and without like going through the minutia of everyday playing would do him some good, especially for a guy who has struggled since the onset of spring training. Like he's never looked good this entire season. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own right now. New customers get 150 buckaroos and bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So good, I'll repeat it again. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and beyond. So go ahead, visit fanduel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N locked on to make every playoff shot count like the Indiana Pacers. FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. So good. I'll repeat it again and again. FanDuel.com slash locked on is the place to go. Also, be sure to visit FanDuel.com to look at all the odds that are out there. There's some really, really good stuff. Um, I mean, I, I honestly wasted half my work day just looking at the FanDuel information out there. Uh, it is very enjoyable there. So check it out. At least Aranda, we saw him crush spring training and then he got hurt. But and not to mention Aranda's peripherals look better. He's had hard contact. He's had some really right. bad luck. Um, so just getting into the weeds of that. What was the final part of this man? This email? Uh, B. Lau, if he's what to do with him? Does he's he going to end up like Phillips? Get rid of him like well, a bad I mean, If if they there's no, I, I don't see what there's. Um, I don't see the benefit in dumping him. Like unless you you are going to bring up Junior and have him play second base every day. That's fine. This and then give B. Lau spot starts like you're paying him. If another team wants him, great. But for all the reasons that every Rays fan out there complains, you, you think that like other GMs are just like, yeah. oh, yeah, like, oh, of course. Like, you know, like the, these guys aren't the smartest in the business. Like, that's you know, that's the one thing I don't get about fans and saying like, just draw, just trade them. It's like, oh, not- the guy that you hate because of this and that, a GM is going to be like, oh, please, please give it to me. The, equi- give it to me. the equivalent would be having a stock that was once $50 and now the stock is $10. But you believe it can go back to $50. Are you just going to sell the stock at $10 because you're just fed up with it? No, it's better to just be patient. And guess what? At the end of the year, you can have like a, a, a you can pretty much wash your hands of the money yeah. and go on your merry way. Um, I, you know, so to me, you're kind of in be loud to the end and you're going to stick it out and he provides power over the long sample size. He should win you a couple of games and that matters. I mean, that matters in the, big, in the grand scheme of things. Like when we get down to the end of the season and this team's in a wild card race, two, three games is going to be the deciding factor. And that could be two, three games that be loud picked up for you. Cause he hit a three run Homer, a two run Homer. So, you know, I, 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 I'm a, I, I'm yeah. uh, I'm staunchly pro B Lau, but I'm also very aware of his cons. And in telling you that he's probably not a part of future plans, I, it, it, yeah, I shouldn't say probably. He's not going to be a part of no. future plans, considering what they have coming up to the minors. Right. So it just is what it is. Like accept it. Like there's not like whoever you're filling in behind that is also not a, a given, and. Bilal's defense, the the whole defensive thing, that's probably, and, you know, it was a bad play by everybody. That was not just Bilal, that Boston Red Sox error. Really, probably a little bit more on Ben Rorvet and his throw, but Bilal had something to do with that, and also Kevin Cash, um, you know, it, it, making the call. To throw it, it's just a lot of things. It, it's, it's like Kevin said that. Kevin, Kevin said it's – it kind of read like he was caught in a game that was too fast. Like it, he, he, the, the baseball moved way too fast for him and the out was right there. But what can it, you ask for a guy that hasn't played major league baseball and however long he was out for the, on, on the IL stint. I think if you, ha- I think there's an instinctive question there that in my opinion, at, the, at your peripherals, you should see that he stopped. That, I mean, yeah. like that. Just like you have, you have a sense. But I think Bilal just automatically assume, which I can't necessarily like hate on this either. 
but when the throw is is flying high and and you know the runner is coming you're just going to assume that you can't get him so he made an assumption and tried to make the best play that he could in the moment um it didn't work out you know in the end if you're going to blame b which is fine you have to also blame work vet for the horrible throw so yeah. it's there i mean just but but it, you know whatever that's a, that's a little league play that was screwed up so that just embarrassing in general and way too many fundies i'm way i'm way more worried about the fundies and all the the mental errors that have been happening i mean like y- y- yandy diaz drops a catch the man he just can't even isak throws it in his glove and he just drops it and boom inning kind of explodes a little bit so you know, the, there's there's just mental stuff with this team that's wrong. You know, the hitting, I didn't expect it to be gangbusters this year. But if they would play defense and pitch a wee bit better, this team would be right where they're supposed to be in, you know, in, in the trajectory of like 88 wins, right? So 90 wins, you know, maybe looking unrealistic of, of what we kind of predicted. 90, 91 was kind of my prediction, I think. But, uh, you know, maybe I was a little bit more bullish. But, yeah, it's just um, – it, it, the fundamentals are a bigger problem than the hitting, even though the hitting is also a problem. It was just one I was prepared to face versus the other stuff I was not so much. Yeah. Yes or no, then we'll move on. Real quick, yes or no. Klosky on the clock, five seconds. It's opening day 2025. Brandon Lau, is he on the roster? No. Okay. Done. All right, there we go. Uh, this final question before we get into baseball trivia, name that war from Rob Ho. Rob says, who is the emergency catcher if both catchers are out of the game due to injury or pitch pinch hit for? Always listen every day. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Hey, that's a good question. Um, I would have to ask. I would have to ask people around the team. Teams always have a contingency plan. There's like a if needed, you'll step in the catch. And usually it's someone that you don't really know. Like it could be like Richie Palacios. It could be Isaac Perez. It could be Ahmed Rosario. It's going to be somebody who, um, that you would never really think of. Um, but they do have that plan in place. I just can't even tell you who that is. Uh, but there, there is always an emergency third catcher who's yeah. prepared to come in on every team and almost always we never see it happen, but uh, let, let, let's, uh, let's, let's not worry about that. Like 0.5% yeah. chance of that happening this season. I, I, I think want, it, I was uh, to, I think one pick. of Caballero Rosario or Paredes, one of those three. Yeah. No, just, okay, you you got to pick one. Everybody has to pick one. Kevin, what's okay. your pick? Oh, I'm on the clock here. Um, yeah. I would go Rosario because, uh, Quite frankly, I don't. The Rays don't have much stock invested in him. He's on a one-year deal, so if something happens to him where he gets hurt, they just move on. He also has the best arm of the three. As far as who might be the best at it, I don't know. Paredes. Yeah, but I, 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 my guess would be Rosario. I suppose I, I would go with Zach. Just you know, just yeah. throw Jose Siri back there because if if they're in that situation, I'd rather just have fun. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because usually it doesn't go well when you bring in the emergency catcher. Yeah, I mean, so uh, I'd rather just have him joke around. Yeah, the Pirates did that with uh, Jason Van Meter, and it was a disaster. So, all right. Uh, thank you, Rob. Love uh, fun, quirky questions like that. Um, might have to ask the Rays Brass, too, about it. Uh, all that. All right. Uh, baseball trivia, name that war. Ulysses, what do you have in the arena of baseball trivia? Well, the Rays will be... Well, now they finished out their AL East kind of tour, you know, with the Red Sox, the Blue Jays, the Yankees lately. But I got I got caught up on the on the Blue Jays, folks. Uh, I went to the Hall of Fame, and I have some names that are in the Hall of Fame with some type of Blue Jays connection. Okay. So. In front of me, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten names that are associated somehow with the Blue Jays. I need you to name me four of these ten people. By oh, association, so, well, does that mean that they played for the Blue Jays? Okay, one question at a time. Okay. 
associated with the Blue Jays. Does that mean they played for the Blue Jays, played against the Blue Jays, had a cousin that played for the Blue no, no, Jays? No, no, no. They, they, they played. They played. Okay. All right. Is Roy Halladay, did he get in the Hall of Fame? Kev? Potato Head? No, I don't think he did. No? Actually, um, he might have. I could right, I, forget, I forget. I forget with that one. Um... I think he may have actually gotten it. Roy, Roy Halliday? Roy Halliday is correct from 1998 to 2009. Um, also, fun fact before you guys, just giving you a little bit of time. Also, Roy Halliday pitched in the Venezuelan Winter League. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of blanking here. Yeah, this isn't my wheelhouse. I think of many that. Blue Jays Hall of Famers, and this is uh, not the Canadian Hall of Fame, correct? The National Baseball Hall of Fame. Okay. Pretty big names. Not well, I would say Roger Clemens, but he's not in the Hall of Fame. So correct, he's not in the Hall. It's that. Uh, wow, I'm struggling here. Uh, Roberto Alomar. From 1991 to 1995. Correct. Oh, man. We can eliminate Jose Bautista. Um, a lot of modern dudes. Is, wait, is Vlad, Vladian? If I, did, wait, did Vlad Guerrero play for the Blue Jays? No, am I am I getting all screwed up now? Um, no, I don't, I don't believe Vlad Guerrero. Uh, I'm, I'm getting confused. I'm getting I get Montreal now mixed. I keep like having uh, Gary Carter pop in my head. Um, I'm like that's Montreal too. Um, uh, I don't, Joe Carter wasn't a, a right. Hall of Famer. Um, um, if you got a name, Kevin, I, Tron, this is not my wheelhouse. Gary, is Gary Carter in the Hall of Fame? Well, like Gary Carter is. Did he play for for the Blue Jays? I thought he just played for the Expos. Oh, the Mets, okay. now you're now you're throwing me for. That's a what I'm saying. I'm getting my Canadian teams all jumbled here. I got Jose Vidro going through my mind. <laughs> yeah, don't guess Jose Vidro. That would be a God. great mistake. Oh. I'm just trying to go around the diamond here and. And even starting pitchers, like, I don't know. This is a toughie. I think you might have yeah. stumped us on this one. Yeah. I, I, I don't I, have, like, a good it, legitimate it, guess. It's, I can... it's tough because, I mean, obviously, in these two, there are there's one manager and one executive, so I'm, I'm not expecting you to get, to know that. But the eight players are pretty big okay. names. But are you guys uh, throwing in the towel? Throw, throwing the towel? Cito Gaston? <laughs> strike two. Okay. Well, uh, might as well make our third strike. Um, exactly. Swing, baby. Swing. Larry Walker. Oh, yeah. Strike three. No way. I am going to say the names, and you're not going to like I think it. Who's Roy, too? Roy Halliday, Jack Morris, who played from '92 to '93. Frank Thomas, 2007 to 2008. Oh, my Bobby God. Cox, 1982, 1985. Uh, Roberto Alomar. Pat Gillick is the executive, 76 to 94. Ricky. Henderson, 1993, Paul Molitor, 1993 to 1995, Dave Winfield, uh, at one time the most um, highest paid MLB player in 1992, and Phil Necro, 1987. So really huge names, but none of them really you would associate with the Blue Jays. Yeah, that's a really good question because that's, I mean, that is not like smacking. I mean, those guys play for like two years or something with the Blue yeah. Jays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Good one. I feel good, good about my Roberto Alomar guess. I can rest. That was very good. Um, very good. Tampa well, resident or one-time know, Tampa resident. I know more Expos than I thought, so that's what yeah. <laughs> you throw like You were prepping Expos. for the Rays split city situation. <laughs> you're already ahead homework. of the game there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, name that war. Um, the Rays are playing the Royals this weekend. Uh, Ulysses and I will actually be going to the game on Friday. Evan, you're welcome to join us if you want. Although I know uh, you got a busy schedule on I'll your work, and I am trying to get to the I, I am trying to get to the shop on on Friday to at least talk with the team and have been around right. the shop. Bring a while. us one of the press box hot dogs that have been sitting in the heater for. Are hours. you getting this on Friday? Are you getting this? Um, Ooh, yeah, we absolutely are not oh. getting that, but that is awesome. That's We're so not dope. in the cool kid club. 
We gotta, we gotta get that, man. We gotta get there early. Yeah, yeah. They're giving that. We, we might have it in on getting one of those. So cool. Let's go. Yeah, that is great. Um, Mike Sweeney, what is his career war? Mike oh Sweeney. Holy smokes. Um, this was a good player. This was a good player. Yeah, it was. All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go off the hip. Ooh. Off, the, off the hippie J. Uh, okay. but the, thing, the problem was that he, he wasn't really a fielder. So I'm wondering if that's going to like de- depreciate his number. But wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 44.7. Okay. That could be too much. I'm going to go with let's, – let's do some math here. If he played 15 years in the show and he was a three-war player, that means that he was 45. But I am going to take your advice and say that he might have not been such a good fielder. So we're going to duck some points there. From 45, I'm going to go to 36. Mike Sweeney played 16 years in the bigs, 13 with Kansas City, two with Seattle, one with Philly, one with Oakland. He was a five-time All-Star, all with the Royals uh, between 2000 and 2005. A career 297 hitter with a career 851 OPS and 118 OPS plus, 215 dingers, 1,540 hits. Um, he had more home runs. He never got to 30 home runs in a single season his highest was 29 he did that towards he had a couple 22 24 22 21 so no. not really a huge power guy but more of a hit for average and doubles guy had a lot of doubles uh, during his career and individual seasons you guys really went bullish on mike sweeney because his career war is 24.8 on baseball reference and I just wanted to correlate with Fangraphs, and Fangraphs has them even lower at 21 and some change. That's ridiculous. Can you just – ah, oh, yeah, the defense got him. Yeah, I, you know, I mentioned that, and then I, I don't heat my own advice. I was just afraid – I was afraid to put in way too low of a number and be an idiot. You know, that's because we've and been then, doing that lately. We've been going, I, like, undershooting these yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, like, oh, you're disrespecting this guy. So I yeah, went over, I, and then this time oh. – I overcorrected. But I also would have bet, like, my life that he had at least a 30 home run season. So I yeah, could be right. dead right now. So things could be better. Things, things could be worse. Well, I yeah. will tell you in that uh, year – 2000 season where he hit 29 home runs he had a whopping 144 rbi damn what that's got to be like the biggest discrepancy between home runs and rbi yeah yeah it does what have year? in baseball and he had uh 30 doubles that year so man he, when wait, guys wait, wait, were wait, on, what year 2000 2000 yeah holy no, no no 2001 i'm sorry wait nope 2000 2000s. No, 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 no. Wait. This guy, he must have, he must have hit like 450 with guys uh, in scoring position. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Well, All that right. year he hit 333, so probably not too far off the mark there. All right, good stuff, uh, Evan. As always, and how can people find your terrific work? Well, I'll just say head to tintembay.com. Talking a lot of rays, and hit me up on uh, the X. At Eklosky WTSP, when watching games, usually I pose one or two thoughts, uh, and I get some lovely comments back. Uh, you know, when the when the Rays lose, I mean, I muted someone yesterday. I had to block someone yesterday. So if you blo- if you're getting blocked, it means you're doing some disrespectful stuff. Yes. I respond 99% of the time, and the only time you're gonna get blocked or muted is if you are an absolute jerk so <laughs> otherwise if you're not if you're not going to be a jerk we cool we might disagree but we cool what was the uh what was the the the, the word that you used last time um douche pocket or something i did <laughs> i like to change it up yeah that's good i like that i'm gonna keep that all right evan we appreciate it listeners we appreciate it and we'll talk to you next week 